Spider Spider back, but in my kitchen, because today I thought it would be fun to try something a little bit new, a little bit different. Yes, it's cooking with fiber. Yes, um, today we are going to be making cheesy biscuits. Yes, lovely cheesy biscuits. These guys are super easy to make, just a few ingredients, and I thought that with the holiday season approaching, you might need a little little something extra for the table. And they also make a really great snack, actually. I had a bunch of them the other night, mm-hmm. But I couldn't wait to make another batch of these and show you how. All right, so let's get to it. All righty, so first things first, you wanna preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's do that real quick. And while that's going, make sure that you have a cookie sheet or a pan that is lined with parchment paper so that you don't have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> it's a bonus. All right, so. Now, the ingredients are very, very simple. All right, so basically it amounts to flour, baking powder, butter, milk, and shredded cheese. It's that easy. Mm-hmm, yep. And I'm also going to add in a special spifferific ingredient and see how those work out because I didn't try it on the first batch, but I thought, hmm. I can't leave well enough alone, and I like to march to the beat of my own bongos. So yes, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. So as far as your ingredients, you need to start off with two cups of flour. Mm -hmm. I'm using all purpose, but we're doing what we do. All right, so let me get my flour ready here. So two cups. Now, I know that this is quite a stretch from what I usually do my videos on, but I just, I thought it would be fun to try and, you know, do something a little bit different. You know, I mean, I've been doing origami videos lately, and I thought, well, this is creative too. You know, it's creating, but in the kitchen, something that I usually do not do. But recently, I was inspired, so I thought, why not, you know? And I can share the adventure with you guys. All right, and then level it out. There we go. So we've got one. And you see, real professionals, they have everything all measured out beforehand. Me, no. Hence why I'm not a professional. Okay, one more should do it. Okay, so we're almost there with our dry ingredients. So we got the flour, that's all hunky-dory. Now you're going, so that's two cups of flour and we also need a tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda, Baking powder is what we need. So a tablespoon of that. And I just, I love how the can has this little thing on the top so you can level out easier. I love that. It's the little things in life that make my life worth living. So a leveled out. There we go. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that, that is our dry ingredients. Now we need to add the butter. And I mean, they say use cold butter and I can understand why. Me, I let it sit out on the counter for a bit so that it would soften up. Now I know I've been told don't do this, but I did it anyway. So we're going to cut in the butter and uh, mix that in as well. So let's start doing that, shall we? All right, so you're gonna need 
four tablespoons of butter, which in my case is half of a stick, and I'm using unsalted butter. And so I already cut it out beforehand because I used the other half last night. So, boop. Okay. And going to cut it in. Now, you quite literally start by cutting it. And I did actually do a little bit of homework. I did where I, I saw that you can use a fork to help facilitate sort of smushing down the butter in between the prongs of the fork. You know what? Let's give you a better view. Hang on, just a moment. Hang on, I'm switching. I'm trying to switch. Okay, I can't switch. All right, hang on, one second. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so basically you're just sort of smooshing in the butter into the flour. Like so, yes. And the recipe called for pea-sized bits of butter. I mean, ultimately, it just becomes one big homogenous dough. So now, granted, I am an abject novice, painfully so, when it comes to cooking. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt, literally and figuratively for that matter. So just sort of blending in our butter, yes. And I'm going to keep blending, 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 and then we will add the wet ingredients, the fun stuff, all right? I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I mixed in and cut in my butter into our baking powder and flour mix. Now, like I said, now is the fun part. Going to add one cup of milk. Now, I didn't have any milk on hand because to me, when it comes to coffee, milk is for lightweights. So I like to use half and half. And on the first batch that I had made, it worked out fine, just as long as you're not using skim. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So <laughs> if it's, you know, whole milk, groovy, half and half, awesome. Okay. So one cup of milk or half and half, as the case may be, and drizzle that on there. There we go. There we are. Okay, and with a spatula, start mixing. Now, on my first attempt, I made quite a mistake. I was using a whisk. That didn't go over well. No, no, no. Yeah, I was I was trying to use a whisk, and the dough is extremely sticky. This is not a batter. This is a dough, and all the while I was going dough. Yeah, um, because this gets really thick and really sticky really fast. So yeah, use. Use a spatula. I can't recommend that enough. And just keep mixing it until a sticky dough starts to form. And mix it in completely so that it is a nice and homogenous consistency of sticky doughy goodness. Make sure that you go around the edges of the bowl Just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. And after making a couple of batches, you will have the arms of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, typically, I like to mix dough by hand, literally with my hands. 
because I'm a very tactile person and I like to make sure that it's completely mixed through and you really get a nice sense of whether or not it is completely mixed if you do it by hand. However, it's really messy. Yes, it is. Like, as, as you can see, this is very sticky dough. You know, very, very sticky. So you might not want to do that, um, you know, mixing it with your hands. And if you do, also be sure that your hands are clean, well washed. Yes, cleanliness is a good thing. So it looks like our dough is just about good. All right, so that was one, that was one cup of milk. And now here's the fun part. Cheese, please. Yes, it is one half of a cup of shredded cheese. This is cheddar. And just sort of do that and then start mixing, and then I'll add the rest of it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do this with the entire batch with the cheese, and then I'm going to separate half of my dough mixture, and then the other half, I'm gonna add my secret ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> Because like I said, I cannot leave well enough alone. Even in the kitchen, I am a bit of an imp. Can't help it. Oh, my oven has fully preheated. That's lovely. Okay, so when your mixture is relatively mixed through and homogenized, which we are just about there. We are going to make small clumps and put them onto our cookie sheet. Yes, so, but I do wanna separate approximately half, which is kind of tricky to do considering it wants to stick to itself. There we go, that's approximately half, I wanna say. Okay, it needs a little bit of finesse here, which I don't have, but hey, I'm doing the best I can. Okay, there we go. All right, so now for the placement. Alrighty, so, Again, when I first made this, I was just, I was just going in with my hands and creating balls of dough with my hands. And yes, it was a hot mess. So instead, I'm just taking a blob off of my spatula and then plopping it down. Now the recipe says approximately 10 of these biscuits is what you can make out of the dough that you have, about 10. Me, I made about, I wanna say, it wasn't quite 10, I think it was fewer than that. It's more like seven. Depends on the size that you want, really. I tell you, this dough is uber sticky. Hence why I'm doing it this way. <laughs> There we go. And also hence why I'm using parchment paper. There we go. Also, unlike some other biscuits and recipes and so forth, these really do not flatten out. They pretty much, they pretty much stay as you see them. So whatever, whatever they look like going in is how they're going to look coming out. All right. Now 
that's going to be a nice little one. There we go. All right, so now for the secret ingredient. Now, like I said, because I can't leave well enough alone, I thought jalapenos. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to be god awful or not, but I thought, eh, let's try it. So if you want to try it, and if it works, I measured out about a third of a cup of jarred jalapenos, and then I cut them up. And the reason why I did a third of a cup is because I knew that I was only going to be mixing them into half of the recipe. So I don't know. We'll see. But I thought, why not, you know? Life is short. Take chances. The other thing is, is that with baking, baking is more of a science, whereas I think that cooking is more of an art. And you have more leeway with flavors and ingredients when it comes to baking, uh, cooking, excuse me. So I thought, eh, we'll, we'll try it, you know? So I'm just trying to mix in my, my peppers and I don't know, you tell me, I, I could be delusional by all means, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah, I could be delusional, but I figured why not, you know, try it out. So let's get a couple of these bad boys going. Also, if you have all of your ingredients and so forth prepared ahead of time, this really does not take long at all to make. Because after we pop them in the oven, it's only about 15 minutes until they're ready, which is awesome. Okay, and let me sort of scooch that guy, scooch you. I need some more room. All right, here we go. And one more. So, let's pop them in the oven and see what we get. All right, so I'll see you in about 15 minutes until they are nice and golden brown on the tops. All right, my dear, so it's been 15 minutes. Let's see what we got. So we got the jalapeno ones on one side, and we've got the regular ones, and this is really hot! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, yeah, that was not that was not smart on my part. <laughs> okay, yeah, that 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 was not very bright. <laughs> Can you tell I don't work in the kitchen much? No, I work with yarn. <laughs> it's safer. All right, so. We have our little biscuits. I think that they look pretty darn good. And as soon as they are not molten hot, we're gonna do a taste test. All right, so give me a couple of minutes to let these cool down just a little bit and I will give you the final verdict. Uh-huh. Alrighty, so now it's time for the taste test. Now. I didn't do anything differently with 
half of the dough since last night. So that should be the same, but I have to give it a little taste test anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think that I could use a little bit more cheese because I'm an absolute freak for cheese, okay? Um, however, I don't know if adding that much cheese would make it too globby when it's baking or, you know, like how that would affect that. But now let's try the jalapenos. So, I mean, it, it looks, you know, it looks like it baked in nicely. So I don't know. Let's see. I like, excuse me, I like, good. Um, now what's interesting though, is that they, they, they didn't, um, they didn't dry out at all. They're still moist. And I was a little concerned that they might burn considering that the oven is at 425, but no, actually, I think they worked out just fine. Um, as far as how well they will keep, I imagine that the ones with just the cheese will keep better than the ones with the jalapenos in them just because of, because of the extra moisture. So I would say if you are going to make them with jalapenos, make sure that you eat them ASAP. But you know what? Considering how yummy these are, out of the ones that I made, I have a feeling they're not going to last very long. So... Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Not bad, if I have to say so myself. <laughs> Alrighty, so that concludes my video for today. I hope you liked it. I know this is a complete departure from my usual videos, but again, I thought it'd be fun to try out. And I had a lot of fun, did you? I did. So listen, if you did like this video, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know I appreciate your appreciation. Also, um, if you guys are interested in me doing more of these videos, please let me know whether it's cooking or baking. I've got a lot of ideas and I like the idea because it's still creative. It's creativity in the kitchen, not just with yarn or paper, but food. Yeah. So listen, if you are interested in seeing more of this kind of video, me being inept in the kitchen, um, <laughs> let me know what you think. And also what kinds of recipes you might be interested in seeing. I already have some ideas, but I'm always open to suggestions. So listen, you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, Stay cooking, stay baking, stay, stay shaking and making, <laughs> and uh, stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day, and a yummy day, too. <laughs>